I'm Gabe, the guy behind the post on the water cooling subreddit, eventually Imgur, and of course, this setup. Honestly, I wasn't really planning on posting my build online. I was just asking questions on Reddit and the Linus Tech Tips forum about a few things I was unsure of, and a couple people requested to see it. Rather than reply back to every comment, I thought I'd just make a video while there's still momentum, if there's any left. There's a lot of things I could cover here. People were asking about my MIDI controllers, my mixers, my displays, all sorts of things. I don't wanna cover absolutely everything, but I will cover what I built my setup to do, and then we'll get to the water cooling. Also, in advance, forgive me for any poor quality or bad editing. I haven't made videos in a really long time, and I'm a little bit rusty. Not to mention, it's hard to get good lighting in here, but I think I did an all right job. So as I stated, and as you can probably see, my setup was focused around two things, music and games. I use Ableton and mostly make EDM music. <laughs> work on covers of well-known music. When I'm not making music, I like to game. And I know it may seem like I really like Minecraft with the torches and all, but I really haven't played it much lately. Um, and when I do, I typically gravitate to the version on the Switch just because of the portability factor, but even then I haven't played that a lot lately because I've been waiting for the Better Together update, which is seemingly never coming out. I actually clock the most hours in multiplayer games like Rocket League and PUBG, and that's where most of my recording footage is. I have a dedicated recording PC that actually lets me record my main display at native resolution and FPS, 3440 by 1440 at 100 FPS. The only program I could get to make this work was FFmpeg. My recording setup is actually pretty sweet, as I have three PCs at my disposal. My main PC, my recording PC, and my Surface Book. This allows me to record on one PC, which is constantly parting the videos, that will eventually override each other. So 10 minute segments, 10 parts, and then it starts overriding the old parts. And so when a file closes off, I just use my surface to pull out the little piece from that file that I actually wanna keep, whatever play I made in Rocket League or PUBG or whatever. Each process takes time, but with the recording PC, constantly recording segments and the surface letting me cut pieces out of those segments that I actually want to keep, I can actually kind of edit on the fly so I don't keep my friends waiting. In addition to recording my gameplay, FFmpeg actually lets me record my mic, the Discord, and my soundboard, parting them in sync with the video. It's more impressive than it sounds. I actually save each file individually in parts in sync. This lets me mix the volumes of the gameplay, my voice, their voices, my soundboard in post. I'd really like to get into some detail on how my audio system works and how all of my PC's audio channels are actually intertwined. Additionally, I'd like to get into my video recording setup. It's really robust and I haven't seen anything quite like it. Nobody really records 3440 by 1440 at 100 FPS. And I mean, for good reason, you can't really display that anywhere online, at least not yet. So if you care about any of that at all, feel free to subscribe. I'll be making some in-depth videos on my video and audio setup in the future. Now that I've answered a few of the questions I saw on Imgur and Reddit, I'll get into the water cooling. My room gets extremely hot due to all the high-end components. I'm running a 7900X, a GTX 1080, and a GTX 1050 Ti in my main PC. And in my recording PC, I have a 6800K and a GTX 1080. A lot of people were wondering why I had the GTX 1050 Ti at all, and that's because I used to keep it in my recording PC for encoding. But after I found a GTX 1080 for a pretty good bargain, I had to pick it up. I tend to mind cryptocurrency when I'm not using my setup, and that would give me pretty substantial gains, especially at the price I was able to pick it up at. Rather than sell my 1050, I opted to dedicate it to physics and keep it in my mining arsenal. I've always been fascinated with whole room water cooling ever since I saw Linus Tech Tips video on it. Oh. There's a trip over here, there's a trip over here. Apparently there's a, where? From the copper. So here are the floaties I'm talking about and how they're kind of mushy. 
which leads me to believe that there's some kind of life form. But I'm not sure what we managed to introduce to the system that grows in an antifreeze water mixture. No fans are spinning. Friends, you will actually know less about water cooling an entire room simply by watching this video than you did before you started. Nice try, Linus. Pretty simple idea. Hook both PCs up to the same loop and pump the water into a different room to dissipate the heat elsewhere. The water blocks I got are pretty standard. The ones in my main PC have LEDs in them because I wanted to add a little bit of flair. And I put whatever was cheapest but still reliable in the recording PC. Both PCs actually have reservoirs in them because I filled them before introducing them to the main loop using an extra pump I had with some quick disconnect fittings. This way I could kind of isolate points of error rather than having to focus on the whole loop and the loops in my computer and everything at the same time, you know, when testing for leaks. I wanted to go a little more conventional, keeping the water inside at all times rather than pumping it outside. This is because in Utah, the climate is pretty variable through the year, and I just didn't want to worry about the dew point and the water freezing. I mean, I could use heat exchangers and antifreeze, and, but I, I just didn't even want to deal with it. There could be condensation to the computer. It, it just sounded like trouble to me. I want a setup that just kind of runs, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I tried to use the least amount of copper in my room as it dissipates a lot of heat, ran the tubes in the ground, through a closet, and then eventually to the laundry room. All in all, I think there's about 80 feet of tubing. It's probably worth mentioning that rather than soldering the copper together, I used shark bite fittings. Shark bite fittings are actually fittings that you can just push right onto the copper tubing. It sounds like magic, but it actually works really well. So for the main system, I used four EK 560 millimeter radiators with 16 fans and three PMP 500 pumps by Coolance. Three pumps actually ended up being way more than I needed, or at least I think so. You should have seen how fast the water emptied out of that reservoir when I first booted up the system. I assumed things would slow down once the water made it up to the top of the loop due to head pressure, but it didn't slow down at all. And even after adding both of the computers to the water loop, it seems like the flow rate is going at the pump's max rate. Um, I'm sure it's a bit lower, but it's definitely much quicker. I'm talking two to three times faster than the pump that used to be in my computer or any pump that I've seen in a computer, just based on how quickly the water flew out of that reservoir. And I mean, I could see it flowing back in. Back before I actually started the project and I was looking at parts, I got into these deep calculations about losing head based on friction in the pipes, but it seems like that was either untrue or I didn't understand what I was reading because my calculations made it seem like I would need three pumps and then even then the flow rate would be like half of what it is now due to the, the head, but it's totally untrue. Based on specifications alone, I'm pretty sure I could have run the entire loop using one pump, but I was just overly worried about it and opted for three. I definitely didn't need three. Even, even though I could maybe do it with one, and I really think I could, I'd probably still stick with at least two, just in the name of redundancy. Originally, I had purchased five gallons of distilled water, not knowing how much I would need, but it ended up being only around 1.5 gallons to fill the entire loop, which seems like not very much water considering how much tubing was there, but I guess it's only half inch tubing. Uh, that being said, I did use almost all the water since I filled the loop multiple times. You know, there were leaks, there were problems. I wanted to flush it out. So I flushed it out a couple times. I think I'm down to one gallon or maybe half a gallon, but I almost used all five. But in the end, it only takes about 1.5 gallons to fill the entire loop. When I upgraded the graphics in the recording PC, I actually needed a bigger power supply. So I kept the old one and luckily I did because I'm using that to power the pumps and the fans using a couple of fan hubs. 
Additionally, I have some speed controllers on the way because as you can hear, the pumps are pretty loud. The fans are actually fairly quiet, but I'm hoping by reducing the speed, I can maybe get rid of some of the noise. Not to mention that the flow rate doesn't need to be anywhere near that fast. Like there's really no benefit. I assume it's just burning out the pumps quicker than it needs to. It was also suggested by a user on Reddit that I use these big rubber washers or spacers between the pump and the wood and apparently that will absorb most of the vibrations greatly reducing the noise uh, so I think I'm going to try that out so how are things working well surprisingly pretty good the room is running noticeably cooler albeit still warmer than most rooms in my house and I assume that's because I have six displays and the graphics cards and the motherboard and the capture card and my audio card even my interfaces are producing quite a bit of heat my 7900X, which is overclocked at 4.4 gigahertz, I may overclock it higher than that considering these temps, is idling at about 26 to 30 degrees. And under full load, it's capping out around mid 60s. Sometimes it peaks up to 70, but for like one second, eventually it comes back down. My 6800K is actually idling in the high teens, which is kind of insane. It's reading 16 degrees C, which seems pretty low. I don't know if that's in an accurate reading. It definitely doesn't seem like the water is cool enough to extract that much heat from the CPU, but I don't know, may maybe it is. Under load, the 6800K is actually running in the mid 30s, which is just so cold. Both 1080s are showing similar results. They idle around 30 degrees, and I've never seen them go above 60 even after long gaming sessions or mining. So, does that mean that I'd do it again? Well, maybe. It ended up being way more work than I anticipated. I, I was thinking I'd finish this in a weekend and it took me three weeks. I mean, I wasn't working on it every day all day, but it did take three entire weekends with periodic work during the weekdays. If I had to do it again, I would probably go with a conventional radiator and like a fan from a car. I'm not quite sure I would buy that. Someone on the Linus Tech Tips forum actually linked me a radiator after I purchased my parts on eBay that what, what he was saying would be the equivalent to four 480 millimeter radiators, which would have been plenty, I believe. Not to mention that those parts would have been greatly cheaper than the PC components. A lot of the heat is actually dissipating from the copper tubes in the walls and through the floor and in that closet downstairs. So by the time it gets to the radiator, it's really not pulling a ton of heat off of everything. I really think that if I would have went with two 560 millimeter radiators, I would have had very similar results in temperature. I saw a lot of people saying maybe I should have used a chiller and I just don't know enough about chillers to have really dived into that. I mean, I should have looked more into them. Maybe it would have been a better option. I always assumed that chillers kept the water at the coldest temperature they could. But of course, if you had one where you could just input the temperature that you want to keep it at, that would work really well. That being said, from what I understand, a chiller is going to put off more heat and use more power. One additional benefit that I forgot to mention earlier in the video and was actually a pretty big part of my motivations of doing this was my room is actually a lot quieter now. I'm still running some fans in the computer, but the only reason I'm doing that is because it drives me crazy when it's so quiet that I can hear my LEDs buzzing and the noise from my speakers. I'd almost rather hear a low hum from fans in the computers. So I guess that's it. I saw quite a few people mad about how ham I went here, uh, saying it was overkill and stuff. I mean, I think we already all knew it was overkill. I'm not quite sure why that would upset someone. That being said, I'm no pro, and in retrospect, I would have done a lot of things different. But that's just part of the experience, right? Each time I do something like this, I learn so much that it's almost worth it for just that. If anyone has any additional questions or they want me to do a video on a specific part or maybe even the setup just more in depth, maybe about the custom table, about the mounting, about the wiring underneath is pretty crazy, the, the doors that hide all the wires, there's a lot going on here that you can't really see unless you're really looking. Well, that sucked. So after I filmed and edited everything, I actually went to look at the system downstairs the next day and some of the tubes were expanding. 
I bought tubes from Newegg and Home Depot, but the ones from Newegg were kind of flimsy. The ones from Home Depot were a lot more rigid, and they were actually cheaper too from Home Depot, which is kind of weird. Anyways, the tubes from Newegg were the ones that were expanding, so I replaced them with some more tubing I bought from Home Depot. By the time I started to do all this, I actually got those speed controllers in I was talking about and just got everything up and running. Some of the video earlier in the footage is actually from this point in time. I thought if I was talking about it earlier, I might as well put some clips back there, like when the reservoir was emptying when I first filled it. It didn't actually empty quite as fast as it did the first time, but it was still pretty quick. It's stuff like this that kind of emphasizes the fact that when you have giant projects, you have to really watch them closely for the first bit because there can be a lot of problems. After I had the loop running for a little, I actually turned the speed on the controllers all the way down and that did reduce the noise a lot and the flow rate was still just fine. Before I emptied the loop and actually started retubing everything, I took my computers out of the loop so I could leave the water in them. Uh, but even after I connected them back up, I only noticed like a variance of one to two degrees with the reduced flow rate. With the flow rate much lower, I just feel a lot better about things. I don't think I'm going to spring a leak as easily, and obviously the tubes aren't going to expand. I mean, only the new egg tubes were expanding in the first place. I think the other tubes would have been fine forever, even at the max flow rate, but now even that's like less of an issue. Lastly, I would like to apologize about the camera going in and out of focus, especially when I was doing the commentary. Um, I had it set on autofocus and it was having a hard time choosing what to focus on, me or the setup behind me. Right now I have it on manual focus. It's just a little difficult to do that because I'm a fair bit away from the camera and I can't really know what to adjust it to. Anyways, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm